So this day took an interesting turn. We are at Epcot for the Food and Wine Festival. Ooh. Heading into Club Cool. This is the place they have all the crazy Coca-Cola flavors and a bunch of Coca-Cola merchandise. So they have these sample cups that you can get and get flavors from around the world. Look at the wee cup! Look at my hand compared to the cup. Alright, here are the flavors. Brazil, Peru, Zimbabwe, South Africa, Japan, Thailand, and Greece and Italy. Alright, I'm gonna go with the melon frosty flavor. Maybe. There it goes. Oh, alright. Alright, melon frosty flavor. They're watching me to see how this uh, how this goes down. It's, it's totally like super green. It smells watermelony. I like that, actually. It's like a watermelon soda. I like it. Alright, everyone tells me I need to try this Beverly flavor. And that it's not good. I think that's enough. It's all clear. Hmm. All right, Beverly. Here we're going in. It doesn't smell bad, but maybe that's because the watermelon stuff was in the cup before. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's terrible. Like at the first, the first taste, or you know, at first glance, it's like whatever. First taste. You know what I'm saying? It's not bad, but then you swallow. It's all bitter and weird. For the, for the third time. <laughs> It's like a suicide pack. It gets better every time you taste it. No, it doesn't. It does. Mm. It's the third time it tastes better. That's because it's empty and it's gone now and you're like, oh, I'm it's done. Because it's burned through your taste buds already. Oh, we're going in for four times. Four. Glutton for punishment. Oh, oh shots. See? It's better. Oh, I can see. I'm good. All right, next up, Inca Cola. The name Inca Cola refers to, um, whatever, bubblegum flavor. That's the important part. It looks a little like pee. All right, let's try this bubblegum. It smells a lot like bubblegum too. That's not bad. I like it. I like the bubblegum Inca Cola from Peru. That's not bad at all. Just an FYI in case you're traveling on a budget, the soda tasting in here is free, so you get to try all these samples for free. And so you can bring your kids, and obviously you can get a bunch of other stuff here and pay for it, but the samples themselves, free. Got a little photo op here. Um, when we came for the Star Wars run, you can watch that video, uh, there was actually like a... Um, it was the Lawn and Garden Expo, and they had uh, like lawn sculptures of uh, Chip and Dale there. Now it's this uh, mini in an air balloon thing. Here we have the festival shop with all sorts of goodies to buy. Let's see what's in here. What are these things? Oh, it's a gift card that you can wear around your wrist. Over here they have all sorts of figment stuff, including this uh, oven mitt, apron, some t-shirts and mugs and an ornament. And on the other side, they have their non-figment stuff. So you've got this uh, long sleeve t-shirt, this like mini beer glass, shot glass thing, some rocks glasses, this uh, cool wine glass. Look at that. It's plastic. I know it looks glass, but it's actually plastic. They have like a fork and knife set over there, a plate with a cup holder in it, some cups, kitchen towels, hats, giant mugs, more t-shirts. Look at this shirt, cruise around the world. Here's your, uh, in case you're a sloppy eater, here's your plate, what were a kid. So here's the best sign at Epcot, the craft beer sign that leads all the way up this pathway to where they have the craft beer tastings. Right there where my finger's pointing. On the side of the craft beer tasting building, they have like the entire brewing process. Add water, spent grain, your brew kettle, your hops, addition, heat exchanger, yeast. You can learn, you can actually walk around. You don't have to be as far as I am. Um, and see the whole thing. Fermenting, beer filter. That's really cool. And here is the craft beer tasting room. Here it is. It's nice and air conditioned. There's beer. I mean, seriously, what more do you need? Oh, look at this. 
there's this like nice big area. No real seats. I guess they don't really want you to linger and get drunk or anything. <laughs> Inside the craft beer place, they have all the, the beer related merchandise, like this cool fizzy beer ornament. Look at that giant mug. That's, that's actually really cool. I like that a lot. You have your uh, Brews Around the World bottle opener. Twelve bucks. And on the wall, they have all the different kinds of beer. You have your Bach, your Pilsners, Pale Ale, Brown Ale, IPA, Hefeweizen, Porter, and Stout. And so here's what they offer in the beer tasting room. They have two beer flights, nine bucks each. They have little food, charcuterie plates, cheese dip, piggy wings. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all sorts of cool beer. Most, it looks like they're all local beers from Florida. Water is the most used and also most important ingredient in beer. The more you know. Alright, so these are the three that are in uh, the tasting number two. The Midnight Snack, the Mini Twist IPA, and Concrete Beach Breweries um, something or other. But that's the one we got to try. Yeah, so I got the charcuterie plate. Um, it looks like sausage, some type of ham, some uh, whatever those are, some mustard. What did you get? Oh, the pimento cheese dip. I did, with pretzel crisps. With pretzel crisps, mmm. That looked better than the pretzel pieces from last night. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Okay, so here's what's in the craft beer flight too. Concrete Beach uh, Stiltsville Pilsner. The Three Daughters Bimini Twist IPA and the Shipyard Midnight Snack Milk Stout. So this plus this was uh, 14 bucks. So not too bad for a tasting and a uh, little bit of uh, charcuterie. All right, so I am going to try the Concrete, <laughs> Concrete Beach Stiltsville Pilsner. That is uh, not easy to say. Okay. So, um... It's got a bit of a multi finish. It's, it's a pilsner. Um, there's nothing too special about it. It's made in Miami, Florida, um, but it's crisp, tasty. Uh, you know, it's kind of easy drinking. Something you can have on a summer day like today. It's a stout. <laughs> it's a stout. It's very. It tastes very stouty. All right. So Chris is going to try the Shipyard Midnight Snack Milk Stout, uh, made in Clearwater, Florida. I smell a little bit of chocolate. Okay. It should taste like milk and chocolate and beer. I get a slight taste of the chocolate. Um, tastes more like a beer with just a, a hint of chocolate flavor. I don't really taste the milk stout part of it. Okay. Is it creamy to taste in a little bit? No, actually, for me, it has a bit of an aftertaste a little bit, not very smooth. Okay, so you wouldn't drink a whole glass? No. Ah. So I tried pate for the first time. I've never had it before, kind of tasted like cold meatloaf to me. I feel like I'm still tasting it. Um, but the beers, actually, all three of them are pretty tasty. Um, so, if you've watched my Halloween Horror Nights video, uh, I tried two beers there. So. Some, uh, some quality beers at some of these theme parks this weekend. I just want to mention, it is Monday morning, and the park is relatively crowded, at least uh, for a Monday. It, I don't know if it's the, the food and wine expo that's causing it to be this crowded, or if it's just always this crowded. Whoa, check it out. This is uh, where you meet Anna and Elsa and the Frozen rides up here. Um, all this is uh, opened within the last couple months. Last time I was here, this was all under construction. All right, we're at China. What do they have? Roasted duck, spicy chicken, hot stickers, Singtao lager, all right. bubble tea. All sounds pretty tasty. I have never 
stepped foot in the China area of Epcot before. Um, but inside the, the giant temple, they have this Shanghai Disney stuff. Look at Adventure Isle. That's awesome. So here they have concept artwork for the Roaring Rapids and uh, the giant alligator that you see at the end. I've seen videos of this thing, it's really cool. Crocolion. Crocolion. And here they have this giant map that shows Adventure Isle, Mickey Avenue, Disney Town, and all the different areas of Shanghai Disneyland. Oh, this is cool. I'm kind of glad we stepped in here. Gardens of Imagination. I guess over here we have uh, some of the horses that make up the carousel. And here we have South Korea next to China and their offerings include a Korean style barbecue beef, roasted pork lettuce wrap and kimchi, vegan Korean barbecue, grapefruit brew. Ew. That pork lettuce wrap looks pretty darn good though. All right, we've made our way into Africa where we have another one of the food tents, the African food tent. And so what do they have over here? Beef tenderloin tips and butter chicken. Those beef tenderloin tips look delicious. Here's a look at the full menu of Africa. It looks like they have some African wine here as well. All right, so we got the butter chicken here. With naan bread. With or naan. Naan. And I got the Shiraz, um, sweet Shiraz. All right, so let's see. I know we're eating off the trash can, but there are no tables open. Trash can's clean enough. What do you guys think? Good stuff? It's really good. It looks really good. It's got a little kick to it, but it's good. Yeah, it's got a kick. Well, that's what the bread's for, you know, kind of softens the kick, right? All right, I'm going to try the Shiraz. We just got a tip that the tenderloin tips are delicious. All right, let me be careful here. Multitasking. Dad. It's sweet. Dad. It's really sweet, um, but it's 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 a little too sweet for me. Um, I like a sweet wine, but this is really like desserty wine. If you like a sweet, a really sweet wine, get the Shiraz. Um, Four fifty, and I paid a little extra for a souvenir glass. This is not the souvenir glass, um, but not too bad. I mean, for a decent amount of wine. All right, we are near Germany, and they have the Brewers Collection. Um, unfiltered Zwickel, Hefeweizen, Weizen mix, and uh, you know, Dasani. And that's over here. Here in Poland, they have kielbasa and potato pierogies. Uh, Kolapki? Kielbasa looks really darn good. And even though the park is relatively crowded, the lines uh, aren't too bad at all. And it looks like they also have some Polish beers on tap here. Here's a better look at those. Oh, and a an frozen sarlatka. Hmm. Oh, Italy, my favorite food. Baked ziti and chicken parmesan. Tuscan style soup stew. A cannoli. Mmm. And Italian beers. Moretti is my favorite Italian beer.
We got water, and uh, they gave it to us in these Booty You Halloween cups. Pretty cool. Hey, looking for legit feedback from Disney Vacation Club members? Is it worth it? I'm really curious to do it. Hey, at this Joffrey's Coffee and Tea Company, they have spiked chai latte with Bailey's Irish Cream or Grey Goose Vodka. Mmm. Germany menu, bratwurst, strudel, some German beers down there, and Rieslings. All right, here in America, we have hops and barley, uh, New England lobster roll, or did that all wrong? Don't don't leave me hate messages. Uh, smoked beef brisket, carrot cake, Sam Adams, um, and some other American beers. The line goes back there to that red hut back there. So it's like legit 963 degrees outside today. Um, skin melting off my face, like at the end of uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's uh, it's really hot, it's really hot. 91 with a real feel of 102. 102 or 967 degrees. Here in Japan, you have your sushi, your garlic shrimp, edamame, kirin, ishiban, Sapporo, and uh, other cocktails as well, sake. Guys, I can't even tell you how good this Japan booth smells right now. We're walking up on the Morocco booth. Over here, you have a couple of different options. Hummus fries, baklava, Kefta pockets. Taste of the Mediterranean. All right, here's a better look at the uh, menu. Kefta pocket is seasoned ground beef in a pita pocket. Chocolate baklava. They also have beer and wine and sangria here. And a mimosa. <laughs> Here at the Belgium booth, they have beer braised be beer braised beef. Let me try that again. Belgian waffles with uh, chocolate or with strawberry, and the prices legitimately aren't bad. I mean, three seventy-five for a Belgian waffle, four dollars for a Ho Garden Stella Artois for four bucks. Not bad at all. Recommended pairing: beer braised beef with a Lef Blanc. I'm sure I pronounced that wrong. <laughs> here at Brazil, what do they have here? They have escondino, de carne, crispy pork belly, and a pau de queijo, Brazilian cheese bread. Look at that crispy pork belly. Mm. Here is the pork belly in person. It's served on a bed of beans. Looks delicious. And there's the Brazilian cheese bread. Mm. Cheese bread, good? It looks nice and gooey inside. That's really good. All right, so the pork belly is really good. It's got a decent kick to it though, so make sure you get something to drink. Um, it's got a nice little spice to it. I don't know if it's the beans under it or the pork belly itself, probably the beans, um, but it is delicious. And so is that cheese bread that we just had. Uh -huh. Next up, we have France Cuisine Maison. 
All right, uh, I'm not even a croissant or escargot. Beef, I don't know. I'm just, there's the menu without my mispronunciation. Uh, Cronenberg, pale lager, Chardonnay, Merlot. So a decent amount. Oh, creme brulee, caramel chocolat. So this is what you can get at France. Yum. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Festival center happenings. They have Buddy the Cake Boss. Um, but yeah, I know they have like seminars, wine shops, all sorts of stuff. They have something, yeah. Here we are at Ireland, the land of lucky charms and culturally insensitive jokes. Uh, what do they have here? Fisherman's pie, Irish cheese selection plate with cheddar, Dubliner, and Irish porter. Uh, warm chocolate pudding, Kilkenny Irish cream ale. Oh, pumpkin chai tea, frozen cocktail. That sounds pretty tasty. And Dasani, made in uh, Ireland? No. But here's the chocolate pudding and the fisherman's pie. Look who it is! It's one of my favorite Disney characters. Not because of the Jungle Book, but because of the TV show Tailspin. Baloo the Bear! Why does everyone give DuckTales and Darkwing Duck the love when Tailspin was just an awesome show? Do you guys remember Tailspin? Do you remember the theme song? They had a good theme song too. And now we're approaching Scotland. I'm not going to try a Scottish accent, but let's see. They have fresh potato pancakes, lamb stew, the tipsy laird, whiskey soaked cake with lemon cream and toasted oats. I mean, seriously, it sounds so good. Um, and you have your Scottish beer, um, a whiskey aged stout. Here's the potato pancake. Um, doesn't look as tasty as the whiskey soaked cake with lemon cream. Gimme, gimme, gimme. As we continue to make our way around the countries, we come across Canada. Um, Canada looks like they have a Canadian cheddar cheese soup. It's 102 degrees, so probably not big on the cheese soup. And beef filet mignon. Wild mushroom beef filet mignon with truffle butter sauce. That looks ridiculous good. ridiculously good. So does that soup, if it was about 40 degrees cooler. We have like a rapid fire food tents back here as we approach Greece. Um, Greece has loaded Greek nachos, a chicken gyro, hero, gyro, however you want to pronounce it, spanakopita, oikos vanilla cake, um, and some stuff that I don't know if it's beer or wine or what. It's probably wine. Guys, the Greek food tent smells so ridiculously good. And there's your chicken hito, jiro, gyro. Ooh, we are heading into Islands of the Caribbean. Oh, this is brand new this year. Introduced this year just for me. So hopefully they have catered to my taste and something involving rum and coconut, maybe some pineapple is in here. You've got your uh, huts over here. Dominican Republic, where grouper is king. All right, here is the, this is like a sweet setup over here. All right, so what do they have? Jamaican beef patty, mojo pork, pescado con coco, quesito, uh, Presidente Pilsner, frozen mojito with Bacardi rum, told you, and Caribbean sangria. Puff pastry with sweetened cream cheese and guava sauce. That mojo pork sounds so good. I bet you it's really good. Here's your pescado con coco. Across from the islands of the Caribbean, we have this other food booth. That is the chocolate and wine booth. The artistry of chocolate and wine. Um, but these aren't chocolate or wine, so I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but they have scallops, pork tenderloins, a trio of artisan cheeses, cheese, and an artist palette of wine and cheese. Trio of artisan cheese paired with some wine. Not a bad price, really, 11 bucks. Not bad at all. And you have your Chardonnays and your other wines available down there. Like I said, it's about 1,065 degrees outside, so that is fake chocolate. Don't try to eat it. As previously mentioned, it's about 891 degrees outside, but they do have this chocolate studio booth um, with the fancy chocolate stuff. You've got an almond truffle available here, as well as Girardelli chocolate raspberry tort, a chocolate truffle, some other wine options available. Here is a look at that chocolate raspberry tort. It looks really good. 
over here, across from that artistry of chocolate stuff, which was right over there, we have the Greenhouse Guru booth. Heirloom tomato salad, dot confit, chilled tomato gazpacho, San Marzano potato. So this is like your healthier foods. Like the peanut butter and white chocolate mousse, caramel drizzle. <laughs> and right across from it, you have the Chew Collective with your peanut butter and white chocolate mousse with caramel drizzle. What? As well as a grilled beef skewer and ricotta and zucchini ravioli. And that's that right there. Looks good. Looks real good. Yeah, all right, so what did you get? I got the peanut butter and white chocolate mousse with caramel drizzle, and it looks like some kind of nut on top. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I got the grilled beef skewer with feta cheese, apricots, and um, I don't know, mixed greens or something. It looks pretty tasty. How's that? It's really good. Is it? It tastes like uh, the peanut butter and jelly milkshake from 50's Primetime at Hollywood Studios. I don't know what that tastes like, but it sounds good. It's really good. You gotta get it. Okay, grilled beef skewer. I thought it was really tasty. Um, you only get one for five bucks, so just be aware. Um, but the, the beef cooked really good. Um, it's not well done, so if you like your beef like on the border of burned, probably not up your alley, but uh, it is pretty tasty. <laughs> that Greenhouse Guru booth um, is also new to 2016. So those are all towards the front of the um, park, um, not back where the worlds are. Because it's 441 degrees outside, we are making our way to Soren, where there's some air conditioning. And uh, I've never ridden Soren in my life. So this is a brand new experience for me. Hawaii is home of the Kalua Pork Slider, but I don't remember seeing a Kalua Pork Slider. Was there? I'm gonna have to look at that Hawaii booth again. I like this plain thing. I, I want this like hanging up in my kitchen. Look at this uh, bush thing Mickey with his uh, kebab and his corn on the cob on the grill. So this is why I didn't know they had pork sliders at Hawaii because I haven't been by this booth yet. The Kalua pork slider it so sounds good. really it's good. Delicious. And they have Kona Big Wave Golden Ale. <laughs> right across from Hawaii is the Farm Fresh booth, introduced in 2012. Loaded mac and cheese with pepper bacon cheddar cheese, peppers and onions, chicken and dumplings, and a pickled beet salad. There is that loaded mac and cheese, and it looks ridiculous. So here's a better look at that Kalua pork slider. Looks really good on the, uh, I guess that's like a Hawaiian sweet roll type thing that it's on. Mmm, that looks tasty. Mm. And right next to Hawaii is Patagonia. Beef empanadas, grilled beef skewers, roasted verlasso salmon, salmon, um, pino, some wine options. Uh, all right. Over here is a better look at the beef empanada and the salmon. Salmon looks like gourmet. And beef empanada, you can't go wrong with an empanada. Next up, we have the desserts and champagne booth. They have hard soda floats that are alcoholic with vanilla soft serve ice cream and hard root beer, cherry cola, hard orange soda, and then they have non-alcoholic options with Coke and Fanta. Um, and then you have uh, some wine, well I shouldn't say wine, you have champagne options down there. Dom Perignon, 32 bucks. Fancy booth. So we're gonna be back at Disney in January um, and one of my goals is after running the Dopey Challenge to uh, drink my way around the world and look, they have glasses to support that very thing. Taste your way around the world rocks glasses. Check this out, they have a Chardonnay made exclusively for the Food and Wine Festival. And they have a Food and Wine Dooney and Burke. And it says the year on it, too. Oh, does it? Yeah. Oh yeah, Festival 2016. So they have, you know, the bigger options, the smaller purses. Large. And the largest one up there.
What'd you get? I got the chocolate and caramel creme brulee. Creme brulee from France and? It's really good. Is it really good? Yeah. Is it thick? It looks kind of thick. It's too bad. It's like really good chocolate pudding. Yeah, I don't really get too much of the caramel. No. But More chocolatey really than good. anything else? Yeah. Sky above looking a little ominous, wind picking up. And we are at Australia, um, so they have uh, grilled sweet and spicy shrimp, grilled lamb chop, um, and pinto potato crunchies. That thing looks delicious. And uh, yellow cake dipped in chocolate and shredded coconut, lamington. Okay, here is the grilled lamb chop with the mint pesto and potato crunchies. Uh, it is uh, 7 25 Ready. All right, so I'm gonna try this thing out. If I don't drop it all. It's not bad. Um, out of the things I've tried today, I think it may be my least favorite. Um, I don't like the pesto sauce so much. The crunchies are good, and the lambs cook really perfectly, but the, the pesto, not my favorite. But I'm not a big pesto guy to begin with, so that could be it. All right, guys, what's the review on the lamb chop? Besides hard to cut with we, a plastic we knife. A piece yet. Oh, we're still going yeah, for we're it. Okay. Still going for it. I couldn't do it, so he's trying now. <laughs> See, this is when you need that Michael Myers knife to come in handy. See? It's okay. It's okay. All right, so I think we're gonna give the lamb chop a thumbs down. In Australia, go ahead and skip it. It was okay. It's just. Everything else we've had so far has been better today, so I would just walk right by that food. And right across from Australia is Mexico. <laughs> and they have uh, shrimp tacos, barbacoa enchilada, flan, and Mexican beer and sangria and margaritas. Next to Australia, New Zealand, with mussels, a lamb meatball, and venison loin. Also, they have wine, um, you know, Pinot, Pinot Noir, Blanc, uh, Sauvignon, and uh, those are the options at New Zealand. All right, over here we have the Tiki Torch, uh, frozen passion fruit thrills with juicy sweet flavors, a hint of tartness blended with Grey Goose vodka. All right, so just rode Soren for the first time ever, and um, it's, it's a thing. I mean, it's a ride. It's okay. I didn't love it. I don't get why... Like it has 70 minute long waits or anything. Uh, I mean, it was cool, but I don't know. I mean, it was okay. That's my review. It was okay. Put that on the poster. And this is what we're dealing with right now. It is pouring and lightning and thundering out there. So we've taken uh, a little detour from our day to visit Donald and the three caballeros, or the other two caballeros, in life in ancient Mexico. Just like everyone else has to stay dry. This is actually one of my favorite places to go in Epcot, especially as a kid. I used to love just the, in the background there is, um, there's a restaurant over there that kind of has a, like the, an ancient temple in the back and it's got Mexican food and you've got this boat ride up here. And uh, there's like Mexican themed merchandise and like actually imported from Mexico merchandise. So it's just really cool in here. And we are hitting the Grand Fiesta Tour. We're on the Grand Fiesta Tour ride right now. So that's the temple that I was talking about. And right there across the water on the other side of the ride is the restaurant. See, it's awesome. The amigos, no matter where he goes, the one, two, and three goes, we're always together. <laughs> so uh, this is where we are uh, at 7 o'clock at night because it's downpouring outside and Frozen Ever After has been down for about 30 minutes, about 30 minutes now. Um, so uh, let me give you guys a look at what the queue looks like right now. So after about 30 minutes, this is what's left. Every five minutes or so, they announced that there are technical difficulties. They evacuated the ride, and people are leaving the queue, you know, little by little. We're trying to wait it out since it's downpouring outside anyway. It's about 
7.30 right now. All right, guys, we gave it our best effort, but after about 45 minutes, the ride has been closed. So we're heading back out into the rain. All right, Epcot Food and Wine Festival. We're calling it a day.